Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel Cooks by Carrie. If you're new here, I'm Carrie and for today's Foodie Friday video, I'm sharing how to make the most delicious and easy homemade soft pretzels. The recipe is from Sally's Baking Edition and these are seriously so good. Perfect for any snack or anything like that, but especially for the Super Bowl as it is coming up. For today's recipe, all you're going to need are warm water, yeast, salt, granulated sugar, now you can make these healthy by using whole wheat flour. Unfortunately, I didn't have any on hand, so I just used regular all-purpose flour, an egg, sea salt, and that is it. It is really so easy, and you probably have all the ingredients except for the yeast on hand, and yeast is pretty easy to find in grocery stores. Alrighty, to start off this recipe in a large bowl, you're going to combine your water and your yeast, and you're going to mix for about a minute. Now the recipe says to just use a spoon, however I prefer to use a whisk just to make sure that everything gets all incorporated and I find it just easier. And I did go ahead and use the bowl of my um, stand mixer which you can use to knead, however in this video I demonstrate how to do it by hand which I feel like is actually pretty easy. So if you do not have a stand mixer, do not fret, it is super easy to knead this recipe. So then after you mix well, um, or you mix in well the yeast and make sure it's mostly dissolved, you're going to go ahead and add the salt and sugar and just mix until it is combined. This recipe does not require you to leave the yeast and let it rest for 10 minutes or so, which is pretty interesting because most breads are going to require that you let the yeast um, rest and kind of foam up. But this one, no waiting time at all. So if you're a little impatient or you just don't want to wait that much time because I know how annoying it can be, luckily you don't have to do this for this recipe. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in my flour and mix with a wooden spoon. Now the recipe calls for about, I think it's 450 to 500 grams of flour or in cups that is three and three fourths to four cups of flour but i've noticed that i've made these a couple times and i always need a little bit more flour almost like a half a cup so i just say have some on hand to make sure that just in case you need it and um go ahead and make sure you add in gradually because you don't want to add it all at once in case your mixture ends up being more dry and then you'll have to add in some more water or something wet to hold it all together and I noticed that at the beginning of mixing this dough, I felt like it was, you know, extremely wet. But as you add in more flour, it gets to that consistency you want. And um, after a while you're mixing, you can poke it. And if it doesn't, like, spring back and it's not, spring back is not the right word. If you touch it and it's sticking to your hands, then you know you're going to need to add in a little bit more flour. And what I noticed is that, while it was mostly together, it was still kind of sticky when I decided to go ahead and roll it out. But I still preferred to leave it in that sticky state when I rolled it out at the beginning. Because it was much easier to incorporate the flour um, in the later stages with my hands, I felt, than with the wooden spoon. So just go ahead and once you get a consistency that's mostly dry but maybe still a little bit wet, you can go ahead and pour it out onto a floured surface. So you can see here that I am flouring my surface and I'm not putting a ton of flour because you don't want to go all crazy with that at the beginning. Just enough to make sure that it's not going to stick to the counter. And you can see there's lots of little crumbly bits. It is not together at all. So that's why kind of at the beginning I'm just kind of scrunching it together. But then you'll see that my folding technique is kind of press down, press forward, press down, press forward. Like I'm really, it's a little hard to tell but um really pushing firmly down on it and you want to make sure that you're rotating it every so often so that it is getting all incorporated and um it's all like fully mixed together and it's not uneven there aren't going to be any flour lumps anywhere and you will see that i do have to gradually add in more flour because i felt it was a little bit too sticky still you're going to continue this kneading for three minutes. And I think that anything less than that, it just wouldn't be all mixed together. And I honestly felt like the three minutes went by pretty quickly. And this was not a difficult, this was not difficult to knead. I think some recipes can be pretty annoying where I'd prefer to use my stand mixer. But this one, it was no problem by hand. And 
And before I continue with this video, please subscribe, leave a thumbs up, comment down below if you'd like to see next, share this video with a friend, and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video. I have a goal of a thousand subscribers, and I know that we're only about 10% of the way there. It's a long-term goal. So if you could please help me out with that, that'd be greatly appreciated. Alrighty, let's continue with this video. Now the next step is to cut your dough into three pieces. Now the recipe here suggests this, and I'm not 100% sure why because I'm pretty sure that the recipe makes or calls for about seven or eight pretzels. But what I ended up doing is putting in the three pieces. I use one chunk to make mini pretzels. I use like a half a chunk to make pretzel bites. And I use like a chunk and a half to make two big sized pretzels. So you, this is just to show you that there are many different ways that you can do this. I think my favorite was probably the big pretzels because um, they just are really soft. I mean, they're all really soft inside, but there's more. My favorite part is kind of like that middle center, really doughy is not the right word, more like airy pieces. And I felt like the big pretzels had a lot of that. But anyway, so this is my attempt to make the, the pretzel shape. It is by no means perfect, but they do taste good in the end. So I'm just going to show you what I did and what the recipe also kind of instructed. So you kind of make a circle and then with the top pieces, you're going to twist them together like one or two times. Sometimes I did it a little bit more than I think I should have, but like one or two is perfect. And then you just bring them down and cross them. And a typical pretzel has like kind of like three holes, like the two and then the small bottom one. And it was a little bit hard to make those with the small pretzels, but I would just recommend kind of using your finger to um, make that space a little larger or just kind of separating the um, two ends a little bit more. But that is how you do the mini pretzels. And I'll demonstrate here again just so you can get a better look at them. But they weren't too hard. I think with more practice, I could make them look better. But in the end, they're going to taste delicious. So it really doesn't matter how cute they are right now and again you're gonna need a little flour for the surface but not too much because it doesn't really sticky at this point and just keep repeating until you've used all your dough so cute and one thing i love about these pretzels and why they're such a good super bowl snack or just a party snack or just any type of snack is that you can pair them with so many different things you can pair them with the cheese sauce, like a beer cheese. That would be really good with them, I think. Mustard, people love to eat them with, including me. Cream cheese. Um, there are so many different pairings, different dips you can make that really go well and make this the perfect appetizer. There is another little cutie pretzel, and that one I thought looked really good. I thought they were... They weren't too hard to make. And you'll see, like, some of them are varying in thickness. Like, some are thinner, some are thicker. They also cook for the same amount of time, and I noticed they were all done. So even though they are mini, I cooked the minis for the same amount of time as the big one, and they both ended up the same amount of cookedness. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm going to use it. And um, they all turn out great in the end. So... Don't worry about, like, if you have some small ones and some bigger ones, because they'll cook evenly. And many pretzels later, this was the finished product of one, and I think this one was the cutest looking, because it has that extra bit of space at the bottom. And so if you can aim for this, that is what you're looking for. But obviously, I mean, I didn't even remember that the pretzel had that little place until I looked at the photo again of the recipe so really any way you make them they're going to be delicious and now it's time to get these ready to put in the oven so what you want to do is if you don't have a silicone mat which I do have them but I couldn't find mine you just want to take a piece of parchment paper and spray it with some olive oil or some non-stick spray because apparently they can stick um, and you're going to place them on the tray and then I'm going to go ahead and give them an egg wash by just using you can, it's best to use, I don't know exactly what they're called, but it's like a plastic spatula that has kind of like strings. That's not the right word, but you can like paint stuff on with it or even a pastry brush, which looks like a paintbrush, but it's for pastry and brush it on. If you do not have either 
of these tools, you can go ahead and try it with just a regular spatula or, um, yeah, I'd recommend a regular spatula. It'll be a little bit harder to put on, but it should still work. And then after you do the egg wash, um, you are going to go ahead and add on your sea salt. And this should be some coarse sea salt, so probably different than the one you're going to use in the dough recipe. So it's thicker and, or not thicker, but it's like bigger. It's kind of like that traditional salt that you'd see if you bought like a, a pretzel. Um, and also, side note, there is a step in the recipe that is optional, but I have done in the past, and basically it's a baking wash bath. You take a half a cup of baking soda and like nine cups of water, I think, and you boil it, and then you dunk the pretzels in and cook for like a minute, and then you put them on the tray, uh, repeat these steps, and put them in the oven. Now, unfortunately, I did not have half a cup of baking soda, so I couldn't do this step, but it was, these were so delicious without the baking soda step so if you're in a time crunch and you just don't have the time I can attest that the pretzels turned out fantastic without it so don't fret okay and so now here I'm going to show how I made the really large pretzel and this is the exact same steps as with the mini pretzels it's just with a much bigger piece and you can see here when I was rolling it it kind of didn't want to roll I don't know why but it was just not rolling so I kind of just stretched it out with my hands and did my best to kind of get it to be less thick and then I just bring it around the top and went down like that but you know I realized that it really shouldn't be as thick as this because I'm gonna need some more pieces so I chopped it in half and decided to make two pretzels out of it and just repeated the steps and then again like with the mini pretzels you take, kind of make a circle, take the two top pieces, cross them almost like a braid, like two times, fold it down, make sure there's a little gap between the two when you place them on the pretzel, and you're done. Super easy. Do they look perfect again? No. But, you know, if they're homemade, it kind of gives them a little more charm, and they're going to taste fantastic. And now it's time to make the little bites. So you can be exact with this and you can use like a baking scale. But I was like, you know what? No, they don't need to be perfect. I'm just going to chop off little bits and then I end up just going with my hands. And what you want to do is form small balls. And then once you have the balls, kind of, there's two ways to do it. I like to leave them as little balls because I feel like they taste, I mean, I don't know. I feel like they look more uniform and they look really good. My dad suggested to me, no, once you have the balls, you need to roll them out so they're more almost um, like cylinders. So there's two ways, which I'll show, and then I'll show in the final product what they looked like. But either way is cool. I think that the balls are better, but whatever way you want to do them, just do them that way. And now it's time to repeat the tray process with these pretzels. So I've already greased the tray and I'm just putting them all on. And it's a little hard to see. I'll push the tray in in a second. But you don't need to place these super far apart because they're not going to expand that much. So I wouldn't put them like super close together. But like you can see how I put them and none of them stuck together. So actually I guess you can't put them super close. And yeah, these were them going with the egg wash and then with the salt. Oh, also, if you see, if you spill any of that egg wash onto your tray, don't really worry about it. It will kind of just crisp up and you can break it off of the pretzel once it comes out of the oven. But I would say don't like dunk the pretzels in the egg wash, kind of just brush them. And now it's time to put them in the oven. I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, but your oven is supposed to be at 425. I put mine at 435 just because my oven is a little weird and so I kind of need to put it a little bit higher. But you just want to put them in the oven and cook for 10 minutes. This is how they looked and I was very excited to see the results. So after 10 minutes went by, what I ended up doing is swapping the trays because I wanted them to be more even. So I put the bottom on the top, top one on the bottom, and now you're going to set your oven to broil and broil for five minutes. What I ended up doing is broiling um, and leaving that top tray with the two big pretzels on top of the broiler for like four minutes on that top. But then I took the bottom one and I moved it to the top 
for like the last minute to get extra crispy and I was so excited with how they looked and I couldn't wait to try them. So then after the 15 minutes total, I turn off the oven and you want to be careful with the broiler because you really could burn them and you see how much browner they got. They looked so delicious and I was so excited to try them. And I was really impressed with how they came out and really, really liked them. So you can see they will, they will puff up, but they're not going to expand to the point where they're going to touch each other. So you can see the saltiness and the brownness. And you can see that you can definitely tell where the egg wash didn't hit. But I think that's okay because, I mean, they're golden brown on the top and that's where it really matters. And here was the final result. These pretzels were so good. When you um, break them open, you could see that they were soft, but then the bottom was crispy and just so delicious. This is the perfect snack. Here they are again, just show you one final shot. Alrighty, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. If you haven't already, please follow me on Instagram at Cooks by Carrie. I post lots of photos of the food I cook and other updates and such. If you haven't already, also make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with a friend. I will see you next Friday for a new Foodie Friday video. And until then, bye guys.